Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. This tutorial is a follow-up to the previous one where I talked about the uh, you know coding for linear regression. Again, it's literally a few lines using the scikit-learn uh, library. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to take in your input data and instead of fitting a straight line, you know, instead of fitting a or performing linear regression on the entire data, splitting the data set into whatever fraction you want to do it. You know, let's say you do 60% and 40%, where you use 60% for training and 40% for testing it. So if you have 100 data points, 60 data points are used to fit a linear regression uh, model, and then the 40% are used to test it. So you can actually gain some confidence in terms of your uh, linear regression model. So how do we do that? Uh, before jumping on there, again, a quick recap, right? I mean, linear regression is you have a bunch of scattered data and you think that it should fit to a straight line. So you perform linear regression, which is nothing but it gives you, it fits it to a straight line. And as, as you probably know, the equation for straight line is of the form y equals mx plus c, where x is the independent variable, right? In this example, time, and y is the dependent variable where it's dependent on the x. And in this example, we are saying number of cells because uh, number of cells are growing as a function of time in the experiment we are doing here. Okay, so now we took that and uh, we uh, wrote some code where we imported the libraries, you know, pandas to handle our data frames. And we started off by reading the CSV file where we have uh, one column. Again, if I print this out, you'll see uh, one column uh, for time, another column for cells. As the time goes by, the number of cells are going up in this, in this case. And we defined our x, our independent variables, as a data frame where we are dropping the cells column, okay? Which is nothing but time, right? So this is a way of telling uh, telling Python that my X values are nothing but take this data frame and drop the cells column. And my Y, which is the value that I'm trying to predict or fit and then predict, is nothing but the values in the cells column. That's what this is. And then we, uh, I, I call this REG, assigned it to a variable called REG. You can call it a model. Your model, your creating an instance for the model using this uh, line, and then we are fitting it to the data X and Y that we defined up here. So for now, instead of doing this, let's actually uh, remove all of this code. And uh, now that we have our X and Y, let's actually divide this into, or split this into our training and testing. Well, one thing you should not do is manually div uh, divide this into train and test. Do not cut your CSV file into two, one being train, where you kind of take the first six data points and then the remaining four are for uh, testing. If you do it in a manual way, it's very hard for us to be unbiased and pick the data sets in a random way. So there is a nice way of picking this randomly uh, using scikit-learn. So from sklearn, import model, dot sorry not dot selection okay from sklearn model selection we are going to import train test split okay so this enables us to uh, exactly do what it is saying to separate the data into train test and uh, uh, it splits the data into train and test so let's assign unwrap this like uh, x underscore train okay I want to do x underscore test, okay? Apparently, I cannot type underscore today. Okay, x train, x test, y train, y test, okay? This is equal to train test split, okay? Now, using what data? You see, uh, x underscore df, y underscore df, which is what we have. Let me move this out of the way. X underscore DF, Y underscore DF, right? These two. And split it in, into what uh, size? So our test size equals to 0 0.4. This means our testing size uh, is 40% is of my input data, which uh, by default means our training size is 60%. And I'm also gonna define something called random state 
and I'm going to assign, for example, 10. The random state is, uh, I want to keep, once the data is split, I want to keep that uh, uh, exactly the same every time I run the code. Let me explain what this means. So if I print x underscore train, so if I run this now, here you can see that my input data has 11 data points all the way from 0 through 10, right? And then my test size, my test data set is, uh, uh, you know, no, not test, right? I'm printing train. My train data set has six data points uh, of index 10, 3, 1, 0, 4, and 9. If I run this again, I should get exactly the same data points. I want this for my testing purposes. If you don't want that, for example, if I change this to 20, it's a different random uh, data set, uh, I mean random state, meaning now instead of uh, whatever the previous one, uh, 10, 3, 1, 0, 4, and 9, now I have 2, 6, 10, 4, 9, 3, and if I run this any number of times, it's that's the random state. If I put my random state equals to none, then let's run this, I get 8, 4, 9, 7, 10, 6, right? If I run this one more time, I get completely different uh, numbers here. So every time I run it, my random state is changing. I don't like that, at least for this purpose. So I'm going to fix a random state so I get the same split or the same data points uh, uh, when I split it. That's the reason, okay? Once you split it, then the rest of the uh, process is pretty much the same, okay? So the first step we did was as a uh, uh, what do we call creating an instance for the model, okay? So linear model, uh, linear underscore model dot linear regression right there. Okay, so this creates an instance of the model. Now, once we have that, we need to fit it, right? So dot fit, and last time in the previous video, I've actually done uh, x underscore df and y underscore df, which means the entire data. Now that I split it, I'm gonna do x train sorry, and y train. Okay, let me go ahead and run this to make sure I didn't move. Yeah, I seems to have, I, I did something here. Uh, object has no FIR, oh, sorry, fit. Okay, let's, x is not defined. Okay, I seem to have done a few ish errors here and I hope this works now, okay? So just to make sure everything is working fine and now that we have the fit, we can go ahead and predict, that's it. So let's predict on the test data set, okay? So prediction, let's say underscore test, okay? That's just a variable I'm assigning and you know how to, if you watched the previous video, you know how to do the prediction, okay? Rig dot predict. Or if you call this instead of reg model, call it model dot predict or whatever that name you gave it dot predict, and we want to predict this on the test data set. Okay, that's pretty much it. We are done. So if we run this, uh, oh my God, I seem to do pretty much the same ish mistake here underscore. Okay, so there you go. So it 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 worked. Now how do we know how well it actually performed? There are a couple of uh, a couple of ways you can actually test it out. Uh, one is if you can just print out, okay, what are the test values, like test, and I want to compare this with my predict, if I can type again, prediction underscore test. Okay, so this is one way. Let's go ahead and print them out. So you can see the values here, 238, I got 229. Uh, 265, I got 270. 2301, 291, and 260, 260, that's not bad, 283, 281. So uh, this is nothing but uh, the prediction, and these are all, uh, you know, uh, what's this uh, undefined name, prediction underscore test. Oh, God, let's correct this. Okay, looks like I'm very horrible at typing today, but Please bear with me. I have no clue why it actually printed those values out, even though I made a mistake there. Uh, but anyway, so 238, 229. Again, you can go back and look at this. This is one way of uh, this is one way of actually uh, comparing these values. The other way is uh, look at the mean square error. So you can actually say print uh, mean square error. Uh, between y test and uh, uh, predicted, okay? 
equal to let me be careful here equal to so mean square error as you know did we import numpy yeah so i'm just going to do np dot mean this is nothing but uh, find the mean of what find the mean of uh, our prediction underscore test minus or y underscore test squared okay so this is nothing but uh, prediction test minus y test i mean the difference between these two values i'm squaring them and finding the mean of uh, all of these values so if i look at this now it's giving me a value of 7.67 that's not bad given that our numbers are about on average 250 so uh, a mean squared error of 7.6 is uh, is a pretty acceptable uh, is a pretty acceptable uh, value i would say so this is one other uh, way of finding out how well your uh, you know prediction actually worked or uh, the other way is looking at residual plots you know uh, this is basically you can just do a scatter plot of what of my prediction what did i say prediction underscore test is that what i called it again let me be careful prediction underscore test yeah so scatter plot of this and scatter plot of prediction underscore test minus the y test okay i'm just looking at the absolute values difference between these two that's pretty much it and uh, this is just a residual plot if you have hundreds of data points it makes more sense uh, let actually let's actually plot a horizontal line that goes through zero and the way you do that is h lines horizontal line that goes through y equals to zero and uh, what is x minimum uh let's just put 200 it's going from 280 238 to 301 so x minimum equals to 200 let's say x max equals to 310 okay so now let's go ahead and run this and this is another way of looking at uh, the difference between the two uh, uh i mean looking at the uh, residuals so this is my zero and that value lies pretty close to zero but this is how the spread is with five six data points this doesn't make much of a sense but if you have hundreds of data points you can clearly see how the the deviation is or the residuals are uh, between the prediction and uh, the difference between the prediction and uh, i mean between the prediction and the test you know values okay so anyway in summary what we learned here is how to split your input data into training set and testing set. And once you do that, a couple of ways to look at the uh, uh, or compare the values between the predicted and the actual uh, Y values from the testing data set, uh, uh, subset of your data. So I hope you found this uh, tutorial to be useful. And uh, in the next tutorial, I plan on talking about, uh, again, a quick topic, how to deal with multiple independent variables. Right now, it's only single independent variable, which is time, okay? How to deal with multiple independent variables. As you can imagine, it's nothing but you drop only the relevant ones and keep uh, irrelevant ones and keep only the relevant ones as part of X. That's it. As simple as that. So if you like this uh, video, please go ahead and like, uh, like it and subscribe to the channel if you want more of such videos. Thank you very much.